Hello, I'm Crimson Break, the CU has taken, and I talk about video game narratives and how they work or don't work, as video games are probably one of the best storytelling mediums out there. Well, that and animation. If you want to see more, subscribe and hit that bell. Like what you see? Hit like, as I need all the help I can get on this YouTube thing, and yeah. I want to talk to you about a fantastic fictional character named Ryuji Goda. If you've played or heard about Yakuza, you'll probably know the bigger names, Kiryu Kazuma, Goro Majima, maybe even Nishikiyama. These are some of the best characters in the franchise and so fall down the internet's web and usually get absorbed into the heads of people without even knowing. The same reason why people know about Superman all over the world even if they've never picked up a comic book. One character that hasn't really gotten the attention he deserves is Ryuji Goda, the Dragon of Kansai. Ryuji Goda is a surprisingly deep character from a very shallow game. See what I mean by clicking the video thingy above and see my overly long analysis of the game. He shows up in the game a surprisingly few times for how deep of a character he really is, having his main insights coming in from the beginning and the ending of the game, with only a few flashes in between, but the continual weaving of his narrative within the themes of the game make him stand out as a wonderfully written antagonist. But let's get into it fully, shall we? Welcome to the Deep Dive. The Dragon is a lie. Well, of course, you may say. He's a fictional character in a hyper-realized simulacrum of our reality made only to parallel cure to you and thus the player's journey. And I would retort... Damn, that's a pretty detailed point, but not exactly what I mean. What I mean is that Ryuji Goda, the Dragon of Kansai, has faked his identity behind his motives to become a legendary Yakuza. Now we get to see this through his role as a foil character to Kiryu, and his actions that lead to his own tragic downfall. What would you say were the key characteristics behind Ryuji Goda's character? I would say ambition, honor, and independence. I would argue these key tenets are what make up the character of Ryuji Goda and drives his actions. But what's so interesting about his character is that he uses these attributes as a shield to hide his vulnerabilities, and I'm going to help break down his characters to make you appreciate him just a little bit more, hence the name Deep Dive. Ambition. Ryuji's central motivation is caused by his ambition, to succeed as icon and father figure Jin Goda. This ambition is what helps make him such a threatening and intriguing antagonist. He is attempting to make a name for himself, to become a soul figure that everyone looks up to and admires, which we can see as his goal when he says he's been alone all his life, along with how he'll do something even the old man couldn't. The ambition shows his goal as, in his own warped view of himself, that if he succeeds in becoming an icon, he won't be alone anymore. But of course, it won't. Furthermore to this, think about his reaction when he realizes he has a sister. This is a large revelation to anyone, and his reaction to it is not just confusion, but astonishment. He comes to the climax of taking his name as the dragon, and he's thrown into doubt when learning that the one thing he wanted is real. He does have a family. Even when he is dying, he focuses solely on Saima and telling her about their mother, as he's happy with his family in his final moments. So, as you see, his ambition was a crutch for him to try and make up for his crippling loneliness. But how he conducts himself to achieve his goals is what divides him from men like Shindo, and shows why he is worthy of the Golden Dragon upon his back. What Goda lacks in subtlety or tact, he makes up for with the dignity of his actions. Goda, much like Kiryu, is not a simple criminal, but conducts himself with a set of moral codes that he always abides by. For example, Haruka. Ryuji was strictly against using a child as a hostage, and Sengoku paid the price for doing so as Ryuji killed him and returned Haruka to Kiryu, 
showing he does not just spit his morals on others like most men, but genuinely acts upon them if he thinks he's right. More so, his approach and respect to battle with an opponent. Ryuji hits head on and faces opponents with his own brute force, rather than relying on goons to weaken them, almost as if he is carrying out his own chivalric duels. Even when he did use goons to knock down Kiryu, somehow, he spared him, as Kiryu did once before for Ryuji, further showing how unlike he is to those of Sengoku or Takashima, he will not abide by giving his opponent anything but a fair fight. When his enemies are down or mourning, he does not kick them, but give them a hand up, as seen with giving the Tojo clan time to mourn the assassination of their leader, and a large sum of money to help bring them back up to fight. Arrogance or respect? I guess that's up to each person's interpretation. And one of the most important aspects is independence. I touched on this a little earlier, but it's a lot more impactful than it seems, specifically due to the irony of where he comes from versus what he believes in. Ryuji Goda is the son of a foreign mafia boss who is terrorizing Japan, a mafia whose greatest attribute is its iron creed of loyalty, and Goda's main thing is betraying his own clan. See the irony? But anyway, Ryuji focuses solely on his own legacy, showcasing his independence and by doing so shuns the Jinwei-on code, symbolically forcing away his past. He is the cause of his own anger as his past has literally come back to haunt or, well, help him, and by pushing them away towards the climax, a player sees that he is also pushing away his chance of either reclaiming his past heritage, which was what he subconsciously wanted the whole time, and adapting his character because of that, or by overcoming his past and redeeming his actions. His death was the only real outcome that could have come of his actions, as he didn't change the character enough to narratively survive the climax. Rather, his stubbornness and warped ambition led to his own downfall. A tragedy. Ryuji, Ryuji, Ryuji. So close to absolute greatness. He was great in the game and stole the show every time he was on screen, like the magnificent bastard he is. And he was so close to a fulfilling catharsis of redemption. So close. But honestly, what happened to him was fine. It fitted well with the narrative they did tell, so I can't complain there. And he worked perfectly as an opposition to Kiryu. Still similar, but just different enough to be a proper force of antagonism. Anyway, there's my second little quick deep dive into Ryuji Goda. Hopefully this picks up better than the last one because it's shorter, but it's YouTube and I don't know how any of this works. Uh, anyway, social media is in the description. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more. Patreon is there if you're insane enough to waste money on my talentless content. And thank you for watching this far. Remember Oni, hindsight's 2020.